Hello, this Bible study is going to be on fruit. Now, sometimes when the Bible talks about fruit, it's talking about children that comes from a woman's womb. Let's take a look. In Genesis chapter 30 and verse 2, And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I in God's stead? Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? In the book of Psalms, one chapter 127 and verse 3, it says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. The world says, Children are a burden. They're just fetuses of boredom. Hmm. So, and uh, in Luke chapter 1 and verse 42, take, let's take a look. Let's take a look at Luke. Chapter 1, verse 26. People say this is the Christmas story. I'm not big on Christmas, but uh, it is the birth of Christ story. Luke, chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Did you know Jesus is a, was a Galilean? Jesus of Nazareth? And yet, uh, you know, he's, he's called a few things. Verse 27. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among men women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Salutation is just a, it's a greeting. So, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Yeshua. Oh, wait. Oh, uh, that's, nope, doesn't say that. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and should be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, holy thing, which shall be born of thee, shall be called, the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Hmm. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. But I thought fetuses weren't human. How could the babe leap in her womb? 
And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, now she's speaking to Mary, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Oh, I, I thought fetuses were just a lump of flesh. They're not alive. This babe leaped in her womb for joy. Huh. Oh, well, yeah, the world always lies, right? All right, let's take a look at Proverbs 31, 31. The virtuous woman, the perfect wife. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Now, this is what they call parallelism. Give her of the fruit, fruit, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works, works, praise her in the gates. So it lets you know, obviously her hands are not a, a, a an apple tree, duh. So the fruit of her hands is the, the end product of what she does when she's working. Okay, so you'll see parallelism a lot in the Bible. Matter of fact, let's take a look. In Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17, you know, the Bible, the King James Bible will interpret the Bible if you let it. You don't need commentaries, people. Matter of fact, the only thing you really is good use is the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Uh, that man was a scholar and a Bible believer, unlike today's modern garbage that they peddle. Uh, Deuteronomy 23:17, There shall no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both of these are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. See, the Bible tells you there shall not be no whore of the daughters of Israel nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore Talking about a prostitute, right? It says, There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog. Parallelism. A sodomite is likened to a dog. Because, and it says, you know, you don't take you don't take money for a vow or into the house of God from a whore, a prostitute, or a sodomite. It says, For even both of these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. In 2 Peter 2.22, 2 and don't you let anybody tell you that 2 Peter doesn't belong in the Bible and it's fake. No, the people that tell you that garbage, they're the ones that are fake. They work for Satan either knowingly or unknowingly. 2 Peter 2.22 But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Boy, there's a lot of truth to this. You ever see a dog throw up? And it'll, it'll, as soon as it throws it up, it'll eat it back down again. I, I've 
my dad had a whole bunch of dogs, and I've seen that so many times. You know, throws it up and eats it back down again. I was like, what? The dog has turned to his own vomit again, and the sow, that's a female pig, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. What's wallowing? It's wallowing is you're in the mud, you know, slopping around in the mud, in the mire. That's what mire is. You know, it's mud. So you take a female pig, you wash them, you baptize them in the name of Jesus or the, the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And what do they do? They go back to the mud pit. And what do pigs do? They, they take a dump right there in the mud, and then they slop around in it and roll around in it. Yeah, you can take a pig and you can baptize them in the name of Jesus, but they'll go right back to the wallowing in the mire, the filth of the mud. So, it says, according to them, to the true proverb. Where's the true proverb? Proverbs 26.11. As a dog returneth to his own vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Mm. So, yeah, people, parallelism is uh, pretty good. The Bible does that a lot. All right, uh, let's see. Let's see, okay, in Jeremiah chapter 32 and 19. Great in counsel and mighty in work, work. For thine eyes are open according, oh, I'm sorry, are open upon all the ways of the sons of men to give everyone according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. See, the Bible Sometimes fruit is children. Sometimes fruit is the works of our hands. Okay, I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but there's a there's a reason I'm doing this. Uh, let's see. Let's go do the New Testament. Romans chapter 7, verse 5. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work, work, did work in our members to bring forth fruit, fruit unto death. For when we, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Verse Colossians chapter one and verse ten that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Well, let's take a look at what Jesus has to say in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and Few, few there be that find it. Oh boy, I tell you what, don't you just love these uh, people, these universalists? They say, well, everybody gets saved. I've had people, preachers even, say, even Satan's going to be saved one day because after all, he believes in Jesus. Praise a God. But that's not what the Bible says. Because straight is the gate, narrows the way, which leadeth unto life, and few, few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their works? No. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Remember those words, thorns and thistles. Remember those words. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good 
fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Now, how can a tree bring forth evil fruit? The fruit might be bad. It may not be sweet. It might be sour. It might even be poisonous. But how can a fruit be evil? Keep that in mind. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Something to think about, Christians. You know, if somebody doesn't have any fruit, does this apply to them? Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire? Wherefore by their fruits, their works, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth, what? But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven? You mean we got to do something? But I, I was always taught that was works salvation. Hmm. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Why, we handed out clothes to the, the homeless, and, and we had soup kitchens, and we did all kinds of stuff. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, a lot of times people do stuff just to be seen. I've known salesmen that would go to a church, not because they wanted to learn about the Lord, but because they wanted to, to get into the, the church members so that they could sell them things. Oh, yeah, they'll volunteer at the soup kitchen, you know, on, on their day off, you know, but it's, are they really doing it for the glory of God? I don't know. It's not me to decide. So, fruit can mean children, our works, whether good or bad, and of course, sometimes it means fruit, you know, an apple tree, or a fig, or a date, or whatever kind of edible goodies they grow in the Middle East, I don't know. But uh, let's take a look at Ezekiel. Chapter 31, Ezekiel's, Ezekiel's a wild book. I, I think it's the wildest, most craziest book in the Bible. Um, that's some really strange stuff. I mean, you know, all these people that are like into alien UFO stuff, they always go to the book of Ezekiel. Oh, yeah, man, that, that was those UFO aliens, man. They came down from space and, you know... And, and here it is. See, it's right here in the book of Ezekiel. No, I don't believe that. They do. Maybe. I don't know. All right. Ezekiel chapter 31 and verse 1. And it came to pass in the 11th year in the third month, in the first day of the month. Oh, and if you don't know it, God's year starts in the spring. Yeah. March and April. Um... Our year starts in the dead of winter. What's up with that? God's year starts in the spring. That's when they planted the crops. So when they're talking about the third month, they're talking, you know, like June, July, somewhere around there. I don't hold me to it, but I believe the equinox when in the spring, there's twice a year when the days and the nights are of equal length. And I believe that is the beginning of the year. I believe. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's how it works. All right. And it came to pass in the 11th year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, 
Speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude. Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Now, if you don't know it, uh, Egypt was called the land of Ham. You know, you had three sons of Noah. You had Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, for those of you that don't know it, Ham was the one that was um, looked upon his father's nakedness. And Noah cursed his son Canaan. Just a little background. Now, if you don't believe that Egypt was Ham, go to Psalms 105, verse 23. Israel also came into Egypt. And Jacob, and Jacob and Israel are synonymous. Jacob's name was changed to Israel by God himself. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Hmm. Verse 27. They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. What are they talking about there? They're talking about, remember the the uh, God brought down the hail and the lice and the frogs and the, the plagues of Egypt. That's what they're talking about here. Psalms 106, 22. Wondrous works in the land of Ham and terrible things by the Red Sea. Remember, Moses crossed the Red Sea. Pharaoh and his army, well, Pharaoh's army tried to do the same thing. They didn't quite make it. They um, they got swimming lessons. It's kind of hard to swim when your uh, body is weighed down with uh, armor, you know. So um, they they didn't uh, they didn't quite make it. All right, let's keep going here. Back to Ezekiel 31. Verse 2, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude. Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches. Parallelism, people. The Assyrian, Assyria was a empire back in the old days. They were the ones that took Israel, northern Israel, into captivity. And then the Babylonians came after them, crushed the Assyrian Empire, and then they took Judah and Jerusalem into captivity. Judah, after 70 years, returned to Jerusalem. Israel never did. And Assyria basically corresponds with the the country of Syria today. And you know, if you go to Syria, you'll meet a lot of Christians there. Matter of fact, that's what ISIS is killing. They're killing Christians. And they're killing Muslims. And if you looked at them, they're fair-skinned. Some of them have blonde eye, I mean, uh, blue eyes. Some of them are light-haired. You know... <sighs> And, and ISIS never attacks the Israelis. They only attack Christians and Muslims, especially Christians. They murder them. That's what's going on over there. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. You know, a cedar is a tree, right? Cedar. It's a very useful wood. It, it doesn't rot, and it's bug-resistant. Termites do not like cedar. Something about the oil. I don't understand it. But if you build a house with cedar, you'll never have to worry about termites and, and worms and ants and what have you. They will. Perhaps you've heard of it. Cedar chips. They put them in a, um, closets to keep the bugs away. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches. Fair well, that shoots the black Hebrews down. I've never heard of a fair, complected black Hebrew. And with a shadowing shroud 
and of an high stature, and his top was among the thick boughs. You've heard of boughs, you know. Uh, deck the halls with boughs of holly, ta la 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 la. Well, what's a bow? It's just a, a group of branches. Verse 4. I know, I can't sing. Actually, I used to have a good voice before my voice changed when I was in junior high. I used to be in singing class, and then my voice changed. I guess the Lord didn't want me to be a singer. Or I could have done what Michael Jackson did, right? No, I don't think so. Verse 4, the waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her rivers, running round about his plants, plants, and set out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitudes of water when he shot forth. All the gardens, I'm sorry, all the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. You see, the Assyrian Empire was a very powerful empire at one time, until the Babylonians came. So, Thus was he fair in his greatness. Oh, there's that evil word again, fair. Only one group of people and race of people fits that description. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. Huh. All right, let's stop for a second here. All right, what does waters mean? Well, sometimes it's talking about the wet stuff that you drink, right? But in Revelation chapter 17 and verse 15, you know, it talks about the beast that rose from the sea. And he said unto me, The waters, waters, which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So sometimes the Bible's talking about water. It's talking about something wet. Other times it's talking about the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So sometimes, you know, has different meanings. Uh, you know, why does the Lord do this? Well, one thing is in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white. That sounds racist, doesn't it? Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. You know, Jesus used a lot of parables to, he gave earthly examples to try to explain heavenly concepts using earthly examples. Okay? The, um, so he used parables a lot. But in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, 
and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which is Isaiah, Greek rendering of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time, they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. And then Jesus gives another parable, the parable of the sower, which we're not going to read. Because I could make this a 20-hour study if I wanted to. You know, the Bible says in the book of James, and uh, James had a father named Joseph. And he had a mother named Mary. Uh, he grew up with a guy named Jesus. So let me tell you something. Uh, he probably knew a great deal about uh, the teachings of Christ. Maybe not as much as the apostles, but hey. James chapter 1 and verse 5. James writes, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. You don't understand something? Ask the Lord in prayer. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 29. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation, trouble, when thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shall be obedient unto his voice. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. So, looks pretty good to me, if you ask me. In Psalms 105, verse 3, Glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel 31. Let's start back in verse 6. All the fowls of heaven made their nests by his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. The Assyrian Empire, all the under their shadow dwelt all the great nations. The Assyrian Empire was pretty large. They were really, really evil. Um, if you don't know what the Assyrian Empire was, uh, their capital was a city called Nineveh. Perhaps you've heard of Jonah. Oh, yeah. Jonah was sent to Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire, 
and told them to repent. Yeah. And uh, Jonah didn't like the Assyrians. That's why he, he was told to go to Nineveh and he went the opposite direction. He says, uh-uh, I ain't going there. You know, uh, and the Assyrian Empire, they conquered northern Israel. Perhaps you've heard of King Ahab? Yeah. He took them, took them captive. He, uh, Jonah would have liked nothing more than watch the Assyrian Empire to be destroyed by the Lord. Of course, he did do it, but not by Jonah's reckoning, but by the Lord's reckoning. So, and under a shadow dwelt all great nations. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. Remember the waters, the, you know, multitudes, nations, people, tongues. For his root was by great waters. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches. Listen carefully. Nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden, the garden, right? So that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Huh? Envied him? Envy is an emotion. You've heard of envy, love, hate, jealousy? Envy. How can a tree have an emotion? It's a figure of speech, people. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Figure of speech, people. Sometimes trees are talking about plants. Sometimes it's a figure of speech. By the way, I did an entire Bible study on trees in the Bible. I had a book, a theology book, uh, written in the 1890s. My dad's dog chewed it up. She was a sweetheart. I couldn't hit her. But uh, she chewed it up beyond repair. But um, some people, this particular book, I'm not saying I agree with it. It's just something to think about. It's not a salvational issue. It's just, you know, something to think about. But uh, if there were other trees in the garden and they envied the, the Assyrian tree, does that mean there were other groups of people before Adam? You know, that's what some of the churches believed back before the wicked took control of our money system and bought up all the publishing houses. Matter of fact, the uh, publisher of the number one best-selling NIV Bible is uh, owned by the company that prints gay porn and the Church of Satan Bible, the Satanic Bible. I mean, can you believe that? The largest so-called publisher of so-called Christian books in the United States in the English language is owned by the publisher of gay porn and the Church of Satan Bible? I mean, really? So, what can I tell you? All right, so, that all the trees of, garden that were, uh, of Eden that were in the Garden of God envied him. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height, and he hath shut up his top among the thick boughs, and his heart is lifted up in his height, I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. Well, that was King Nebuchadnezzar. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out 
for his wickedness. And strangers, the terrible of the nations, have cut him off and have left him upon the mountains. And in all the valleys, his branches are fallen and his boughs are broken by all the rivers of the land. And all the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow and have left him. Upon his ruin shall all the fowls of the heaven remain and all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches. And you can keep you can keep reading this if you're interested, you know. Wow. Maybe I should keep reading. This is kind of interesting. To the end that none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their height, neither shoot up their top among the thick boughs, neither their trees stand up in their height, all that drink water for all that are delivered unto death to the nether parts of the earth. Sounds like hell to me. In the midst of the children of men, with them that go down to the pit, the pit of hell, people. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day when he went down to the grave, I caused a mourning. Now, people, there are, uh, let's see, three different words in the Hebrew Old Testament that they use for hell. There's uh, Sheol, which I believe uh, is grave. That's where they lay your body. And then there's Gehenna. Uh, and then in the Greek, there's uh, Tartarus, which is where the fallen angels talks about the where they're chained to darkness. So there's different there's different words for hell. And then the, you'll get the Jehovah's Witnesses that'll point to the one that says grave, and they'll say, "See, see, hell's just the grave." Well, yeah, but you forget the other ones, you know. Jehovah's Witnesses are famous about doing that. They're scholars about being unscholarly. You know, it's it's like somebody saying fruit always means an apple. Well, yeah, fruit is always an apple, but not all fruits are apples. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day when he went down to the grave, I caused a mourning. I covered the deep for him, and I restrained the floods thereof. And the great waters were stayed, and I caused Lebanon to mourn for him. And all the trees of the field fainted. How do trees faint? And all the trees of the field fainted for him. I made the nations. Do you know that word nations is Gentiles? Uh, translated Gentiles and other. It's the same word. The same word. Nations and Gentiles is the same word. It's just sometimes the they translated it one way and then they translated it another in another spot. And I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall. When I cast him down to hell, them that descended to the pit, and all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. They also went down into hell with him to them that be slain with the sword. And they that were his arm that dwell under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of of the uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. All right. Um, let's see. We've done about 45 minutes. You know, this is just the introduction of fruit. I, this is just the introduction. I mean, I was going to go do Genesis chapter 3. Yeah, maybe I got time for Genesis chapter 3. I I guess we could do that. All right, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 3. Verse 1. You know, in my opinion, this is like one of the most important chapters in the Bible. I mean, this is where the fall of man and the first mention of of redemption by the coming Messiah or Christ is mentioned. Prophecy. 
There's prophecy in this Bible. Verse 1, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he, the serpent, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. All right, let's take a look. Who is a serpent? Let the Bible interpret the Bible. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. Cast out of where? Heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. That old serpent. Why is he called an old serpent? Because he's been around for a long, long time. Back to the Garden of Eden, right? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. What? I thought it was a talking snake hanging from, hanging from an apple tree. Uh, I'm confused. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 20, verse 2, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. The Bible interprets the Bible, unless, of course, you get an NIV. Then you got to get a commentary. Oh, yeah, that serpent, that was a talking snake hanging from an apple tree. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Here's an interesting verse, Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. What's an adulterous woman? That's a woman that has a husband, and yet she cheats on him. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. Hmm. Now the serpent, back to Genesis. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, liar. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Interesting. Um, do you know what the pathology of sin is? 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16 tells you. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. 
Let's see if this applies. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, hmm, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Huh. Fig leaves. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Do you know the Masonic Lodge loves to wear their little aprons? I wonder if that has reference to this. I would be surprised if it's not. Fig leaves. Why does the Bible say they sewed fig leaves together? Keep that in mind. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. It's your fault, God. You gave that woman to me. She... She gave me of the tree. It's her fault. No, it's actually your fault, God, because you gave me her and she gave me... Never mind. I ain't going to cut it, buddy. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. It's the serpent's fault, the devil and Satan. You know, the, the devil and Satan that deceiveth the whole world? Oh, yeah. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out under the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Oh, yeah. The whole world. That's me. That's all of us. Turn to the book of Ezekiel, that wild book, 28, verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Was the king of Tyrus in the Garden of Eden. Now, it's a figure of speech, people. Satan was the, the king behind the king in Tyrus. Thou hast been at Eden, the Garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created, not born, created. This is not talking about a human. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. What did he covereth? He covered the throne of God. Have you heard of the mercy seat where you had the two cherubs whose wings were covering the, the mercy seat? One of them was this guy. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. When was the king of, a human king of Tyrus on the mountain of God? Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways. From the day that thou wast created, 
till iniquity was found in thee. Sin. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart, listen carefully, thine heart was lifted up. Pride, people, the pride of life. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Ooh, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be anymore. Wow. Back to Genesis chapter 3. Verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. This serpent was not a talking snake. This was one of the most beautiful probably the most beautiful creature or one of the most beautiful creatures that God ever created. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity, which means hatred, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. You see, people, we have blessings for obedience and curses for disobedience. Right here, God cursed the earth because disobedience. Adam and Eve would have lived forever had they not disobeyed. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also, and thistles. Remember, thorns and thistles? Thorns also, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Oh yeah, before you did all this evil stuff, all you had to do was walk outside in the garden and pick all the, the fruit needed. Now, you're going to have to weed the garden because it's going to grow thorns. It's going to grow thistles. And you can't eat thorns and you can't eat thistles. Well, you could eat milk thistle, but not in huge quantities anyways. I don't know. 
Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. Oh yeah, you're going to have to work out in that hot sun in the field, people. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for thou art, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So, that is the introduction to fruit, fruits. Now we're going to go and do, uh, let's see, I guess we're going to go, we're going to be doing uh, fruits and fruit. So I guess this is going to be the end of part, well, the introduction anyways. Because I tell you what, you, you can make hours and hours and hours of studies out of this stuff. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministry. Uh, we'll continue with part two later. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.